practical in terms of if we uh, you know uh, couldn't uh, really do simple things then it's really difficult because now life is going to get difficult we want to try to apply you know various formulas of you know various variations various creep and all those things so it's everything you know on top of this so if you uh, couldn't understand uh, means we need to understand the basic process how we convert the task uh, and we attach a schedule and a resource to it and then how we'll get a cost and now the cost uh, part starts basically uh, sir uh, sorry yeah. sorry to interrupt uh, like this the presentation that you're showing right now uh, mm -hmm. this was not on the i mean the drive or the links that you sent on email right um, uh, this presentation is uh, simply some slide uh, the thought process is basically trying to understand uh, you know the basics like how do you create wbs how do you create wbs uh, within excel how to attach a schedule to it it's not there in the presentation it's what we learn together that's the most important part the recordings are already released ma'am every recording means uh, past i think uh, seven eight session every recording is released so presentation hardly matters at all. I think I have shared presentation as well. Uh, it might be not uh, the slide included, but it's a simple slide. <clears throat> Nothing major. I have already shared the YouTube link with you two times. Yeah, yes. yeah. I have the YouTube link. Yeah, I yeah. I got your entire list of uh, the YouTube links and uh, the other uh, slides that I got. Right, right. So please uh, have a look at uh, you know this video again, step by step. Try to create uh, you know. Uh, um, uh, uh, WBS, I think I have shared these slides also with you, uh, right? These are the basically kind of WBS you can, uh, you know, uh, use in creating your project plan. This is a simple single, uh, um, single floor uh, house we are trying to build, and there are WBS attached to uh, uh, the WBS is clearly shown here up to three level, as simple as that. As in the other example, also, I think I have shared this uh, PPT with you last time if not i'll share again don't worry and this okay, kind of okay yeah this is the wbs uh, uh second ws i shared with a similar thing only the numbers are uh, sorry the titles are different and again uh, everybody has their own way of thinking or own way of uh, you know labeling certain things like uh, initiation planning and there we normally you know, depicted it as a foundation building, internal work, external work, and something like that. So the approach has to be uniform in itself, rather than you know uh, doing a cut copy paste. So if you just build uh, any single uh, you know WBS, try to attach some dates to it, and then try to uh, understand how we can change a simple Excel from WBS to a project plan, so that you'll understand each and every entity of a project plan. I can just you know start saying uh, showing you the Microsoft project plan. I want you to learn uh, from the basics and understand each and every element of project plan. But if you um, not going to do it, uh, then yeah, I can help you out. I can just you know uh, show the water to the horse. I can't make him drink. As simple as that. So this is my you know kind of last attempt. So let's try to do it. Uh, you know, uh, and I'll give it to you your next session. If you are not done, I'll just skip these things. Okay. So let me move on because you know we can't step on single slide or a you know, single topic for three three sessions. And you know even we had a holidays, right? So we had a long week uh, weekend also here with you. So you know it's just uh, putting out one one and a half hour to basically build a project plan by yourself. Sure, sure. By, by next class, I'll keep my project plan ready. I'll share it with you, sir. Sure, no problem. Uh, anybody else want to do it? Want to learn project planning at its core? Okay, let, let's go ahead. Uh, okay, let me try to revise again the critical task. We normally build this project plan to understand the critical task. What is the critical task? There are the least amount of lags or leaks. So it's mostly continuous tasks we're going to execute uh, from start to finish, right? Or a sequence of tasks, right? So here, even one single task get delayed by project get scheduled. So I need to really, uh, you know, attend a very, uh, you know, keen eye on all these series of tasks. And then there's a second critical task also. In case if this completes fine, then I might have second critical task also. Okay. So I need to work on that as well. So this way, what I'll try to do, I'll try to build a hierarchy of tasks 
one after another where we basically trying to <coughs> understand how the criticality of the project is managed at its peak so that whatever we do we will try to make sure the project won't get delayed by a single day and yeah that's the you know project managers uh, uh, plan to target that's the project manager way to approach uh, these scenarios uh, one by one or one thing at a time of course you have a complete team with you for this but yes as a project manager you have the responsibility on your shoulder to make sure the project won't get delayed okay we have done this thing with the precedence diagramming method where we try to basically um give uh, each and every task in this sequence or plot each and every task in this sequence called precedence diagramming method where uh, you know we try to uh, basically give the attributes to each and every ta task activity or work item as an early start the overall duration with the estimate estimations then we have early finish in case if this task can be finished early how much uh, you know time this can be you know take on then we have late start and then the late finish and then we'll basically calculate on a total float and the duration based on the overall sequencing uh, fitment of the task and here we can clearly understand how much a task can be delayed at its maximum how much a task can be uh, completed uh, as early as possible in its uh, you know critical planning methodology okay so this is the simplest uh, slide which basically gives us a clear view of precedence diagramming method i'll share the you know uh, video for precedence diagramming method again with you so that in case you have any challenges in planning the critical task or denoting the critical task on your project plan then you might have address those things okay uh, i have just uh, shared the one of the more, you know older uh, thing we did in project plan uh, but let me move on now let's try to understand how we plan in terms of agile as we say agile we have repetitive uh, you know uh, iterations uh, going on and within agile if you need to do some sort of crashing what is crashing we try to complete uh, this project uh, in time in case if something got delayed because practicability uh, we have as in you know uh, we are trying to understand even if we you know um, what i can say crack at address or criticality in the project there could be some challenges in terms of a day or two slippages right so how do you uh, normally address the slippage there are two ways to do it one is basically fast tracking and the other is crashing so what is fast tracking you just uh, schedule these tasks uh, parallelly again what we trying to do is trying to compress the schedule in a way where there are now many tasks uh, run in parallel with the same resource count so resource works harder for a day rather than uh, six hours they might work 12 hours they might work uh, 14 hours depending upon uh, you know the resources at hand depending upon the scenario of the task criticality or the mental load of the task we can do or choose one of these techniques okay otherwise crashing is you add multiple resources so that the task supposed to get completed in half hour uh, half the time theoretically practically it will get compressed up to 30 35% why these two are different because even if you got new resources on board they take some time to learn they take some time to get adjust to the team and on top of that they might need some hand holding in terms of how the codes to be deployed how the you know product to be released and so on so forth so there they might eat some of the efficiencies of my older resources as well this way the crashing is also one of the you know um, another method which we normally do now let's try to understand the difference between these two as we have understood the gantt chart in fast tracking i have task 1 task 2 task 3 or rather sorry uh, day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 and then i have uh, you know uh, basically requested uh, resource number 2 to also start working with resource number 1 Uh, from day four, day five. So there's an overlap. Then he works for day six. Then I bought um, resource three 
on the same day as the day seven, even if the second resources have not completed its task. Now here, again, we need to check out the dependencies. Here, we need to check out uh, if there is a task of uh, second resource depend on first or third resource depend on second, then we can't do this. Or we need to plan for some other task or activities or work at it. But overall, in uh, more than 80% of cases, you could do it because there are quite a few uh, mutually uh, exclusive tasks we are at hand. The way we plan it, we could have uh, you know mutually exclusive task planning this way. So that's why we can do fast tracking. But yes, this is a high risk because again, what we are trying to do here, we are trying to uh, overload the human resources. And by overloading the human resources, the quality has its own toll. Because as we understood, right, we have a quality or golden triangle to address. So there's a schedule, quality, and cost. So if you try to maintain the cost and try to increase the load on the human resources, most of the time, the quality get hampered and in the worst way. So here, the quality is at risk. That's why this fast tracking is called high risk tracking. Then there's a crash rate. Now what do I do? I've added three more resources, right? So that whatever the task I was supposed to do in five days, I'm trying to complete in three days or four days, okay? Let me show you, uh, as you can see on the GAN chart of crashing, here we have first five days task. Now I apply two resources, it's getting completed in three days. And in same way, the second task or the second sequence of tasks, um, which have planned for five days are now getting completed in four days. And the last sequence of tasks, which was supposed to be completed by the third resources, now we have fifth and six resources doing that task that can be completed in three days. Again, this is, I'm compressing the schedule to get my delayed project on the track, right? So in case if any critical uh, task project, uh, critical task sequence get delayed, I normally use fast tracking or crashing one way or the other. Yes, for this, you need to understand the Gantt chart in detail. For this, you need to understand how we can plan this out on my uh, Microsoft project. Microsoft project can let you do this thing one way or the other, and it happens automatically in the background. Why we are doing the Excel sheet? Because there, we try to understand how each and every raw element is interacting with each other. And that's why we normally go by the Excel sheet way. Now, on top of that previous homework, please try to include these, uh, you know, two scenarios. If you do fast tracking for a given critical task, how can you complete your project earlier? Or if you do crashing, how can your project get completed earlier? Try to think it through, okay? And try to present in the next session. Here, this is basically practicability of life. So whenever you execute a project, by all means, by all efforts, and you know, uh, any way you're trying to uh, consider the critical task at your uh, highest, uh, you know, uh, with your highest uh, practical knowledge and applicability, still, even if it's get delayed, we normally use the next sequence of tasks with either fast tracking or crashing. This way, we maintain the schedule at an extra cost or at an extra risk or at an extra quality derailment. Now, how do you manage that? Yeah, that we'll have a look at it. But let's try to understand how do we do fast tracking and a crashing. In a normal interview, there could be questions, what could be the difference between fast tracking and crashing? And they might ask you to give them uh, an idea, how do you do a fast tracking or a crashing? There were interview where they've shared a case study with you uh, or a project plan with you, specifically Microsoft project plan, and they, ask you to apply crashing or fast tracking one way or the other. These are very you know, high paying jobs and they want their uh, project manager candidate to be thorough. If I, uh, if I remember correctly, this was at the magnitude of 180K plus. So if you're trying to uh, you know, grab an opportunity which is really good in terms of uh, payments, in terms of remuneration, these are the things you should be worried about. These are the things you should be practice uh, in a good amount of time and try to understand from its basic. 
That's why we use Excel sheet. Otherwise, I could have just gone and ahead with the Microsoft project plan. But I want you to be true. But if you're not helping, then I can't do anything. As simple as that. Okay. Let me play a video of Agile Village Planning with you, and we'll understand how do we do this thing in Agile in terms of uh, the project planning or uh, you know overall how iterations are planned in Microsoft Project Plan. Uh, Agile. It's like Agile Village Planning. Yeah? Okay, uh, let me stop share. I'm really sorry. Uh, let me, you know, explain this again. Now, this uh, slide basically gives you a detail about a uh, relationship between product vision, release planning, and iteration planning. This is one of the page again from the PM group where they've shared the intricacies, how they released our plan. Let's say I'm planning a project solution for enhancing attendance management for state crop. And I want to plan that in six releases. I'm just uh, sharing a thought process with you, a practical example. And each release have, let's say, six sprint within them. Six releases, six sprint in them. Six iterative uh, development, six iterative releases are planned. And releases means the way we have given the software to the user to accept or user to test it further. We do have development and a test run in parallel, but after that, all those reverse fault finding and everything, whenever uh, we assume that we got a really stable release, we give it to the UAT, user acceptance testing, and these iterations are normally included in the release plan. And then each and every iteration is normally planned. Like the exam depicts, iteration one is planned as a subset to my release. So this can be release one, release two, release three. The iteration one of that release is being planned. Here I have a feature A where I can have a list of requirement or a user story one, feature um, A, uh, user story two, and these two can be completed within five hours by a single developer. So that's how he is developing it. Then I have a feature B, user story three, done by task B, where it, it is to be completed in a task. Then I have feature C, user story four, to be completed as a task C, which might take four hours and so on and so forth. So this way, what we are trying to do, we are trying to plan each and every of these tasks in an iteration for a sprint, like we did it in our Microsoft uh, project planning, uh, what we did uh, together, right? Or I did it and you have observed that too. So if you plan it accordingly, you'll understand the intricacy of uh, product vision, release planning, and iteration planning, and how these three things sum up to a level where I normally plan a complete project. And this is a simple execution. And here also, as, as we discussed, I can plan iteration one with iteration two uh, running in parallel if I have so many developers at my disposal. But in a practical life, there's always a scarcity of resources. So you might uh, you know, work with uh, four resources rather than five and so on and so forth. In such scenario, you normally plan all these iteration in a sequence. Normally, as we discussed, any iteration can be from three days uh, to you know, three weeks, four weeks. But normally, normally a one week iteration is a standardized thumb rule within the software and manufacturing industry. And that's how we plan it our software uh, day by day, week by week, and month by month. Does that make sense to you? Any, any confusion here? No, sir. I'm good. Thank you. No, sir. No problem. And in the next session, uh, yeah, let, let's close down. It's quite a uh, you know, good amount of time. How to control this schedule? What do you mean by controlling schedule? As the project progresses, you have to make some changes. These changes, depending upon the new resources joining, uh, so, so there is a flux in the resources, there's a change in resources. There are some extra challenges. There can be environmental like Corona. There could be some challenges like, you know, uh, vendor is delaying the supplies and so on and so forth. So like if their dependencies are not addressed, I change my plan almost every hour, if not every day, believe me. Each and every project manager, we change our project plan every day. 
be it a Jira, Primavera, Microsoft project, or even if you do it in Excel, we have to keep this project plan changed according to the actual practical scenario on the ground. And at the end of these release, or you know, after we do the UAT and the go live, we might revisit how this project planning have been progressed. We as in project manager, so that we can understand from our mistakes, from our challenges, and we can build our learning. And this is the way the project managers are getting matured day by day, and even the software by itself. Okay. And this way, we can be a really good project manager. If we just keep a keen eye on those critical tasks, your project will never fail, never go out of the schedule. And believe me, there are lots and lots of, uh, you know, mechanism who is going to help you to succeed. So there are somebody like uh, internal quality department, uh, project management office, the SCOEs and SMEs, which help you to basically solve all those challenges in terms of technical know-how, in terms of any difficulties understanding the uh, infrastructure or a software or anything which is combined or you know uh, get attached or get used by this project as a raw material or as a you know uh, part of third party product and so on so forth. so this way we're going to start our learning one by one again we are going to prepare for an interview as you are being uh, working as a project manager for a few years so we need to plan it accordingly so that's why Practicing these things do really matter. If you don't practice, you might not be able to explain in the interview. Okay, so please, please do create those Microsoft Excel project plan. Do it with, let's say, four or five tasks as we tried today, right? And get this, uh, you know, plan created in Microsoft Excel as, uh, you know, uh, that trainer have been, you know, shared us. I'll share that same video again, just to make sure you are on top of it. And I'll share this, uh, you know, uh, presentation also, so that we can understand uh, how, uh, you know, um, we can get adopted to this Microsoft project uh, planning in the best possible way. Does anybody have any questions uh, as of uh, right now for me? No, sir. They are good, right? Okay, yeah, let me thank you. Keep, uh, uh, sessions. PDF uh, sessions, the presentations, session recording uh, within a few, you know, hours. And then please, please do those Excel sheet, uh, you know, uh, hands-on workshop. Try to build a Microsoft project plan in Excel so that you'll understand the nitty gritty of project planning, okay? Because otherwise the life is going to get difficult. You might, uh, you know, um, think like you are learning the project planning in French as well. So it's that difficult, believe me. And this is the most crucial part of a project uh, uh, project managers or a program manager for that matter. So if you once know this hurdle, there's no stopping uh, you from you know any of such things. So that's why these uh, hands-on workshop is really a necessity. Okay. With that, let me close down the session today. Um, and you know, please do the um, workshop and let's discuss those things in our next session if you have any problem. Okay, shalom. Thanks, thanks a lot. Have a good night. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Take care.